Welcome back, folks, to WWE Network and Chill. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and right here on WWE Network and Chill, I break down all the original programming that I watch on the network, including Total Divas. So if you haven't checked it out already, check out the Season 1, Episode 1, Welcome to the WWE Review, from uh, my previous edition of Network and Chill. So going forward, as I said at the start of the previous video, if you have yet to watch Total Divas, give it a chance. I would recommend checking out the first episode of Network and Chill, then watching the first episode of Total Divas. If you don't like that episode, watch Episodes 2 and 3, including this one, and then, uh, then you can find finally get a real feel as to whether you want to continue watching the show or not. Is it an amazing show? I would say not, but there are parts of it that are entertaining, and like I said in my previous review, there's just some parts of this show that are just so unrealistic. It's reality TV, you can expect nothing less than scripted TV, than scripted television. I understand that, but even the parts that are scripted, it's just hilariously how bad, how hilariously unrealistic a lot of these parts are, so we'll talk about that. This episode was no exception. Um, called A Tango with Fandango. So we kick off the episode of the Eva and JoJo backstage at Raw and they spot Fandango. And this is not like a crush kind of thing and we'll kind of discuss that that becomes a problem later on. But um, instead, Eva, Eva Marie sees Fandango, but specifically the dancer that he comes out with every single week. Now this is, takes place around the spring of 2013, right after WrestleMania. So this was around the time right before Summer Rae came in as the permanent dancer for Fandango on the show. So Eva sees that as an opportunity, as a skyrocket, you know, a hot ticket, a golden ticket right to the main roster and becoming Fandango's new dancer. The only issue is that she doesn't know how to dance, but she's looking to fake it till she makes it, is how she puts it throughout the episode, which does not work out too well, but we'll get back to that in a little bit. So we also see the Fonda uh, Fandango, the Funkadactyls, rather, ditch the seamster Sandra. Sandra is one of the best characters on the entire show. And as you'll soon notice, as you will soon observe from watching multiple episodes of Total Divas, it's usually the guys, including Brian Danielson, John Cena, Jimmy Uso slash John Uso, whatever, uh, John Fatu. All the guys, all the boyfriends slash uh, husbands, whatever, of the Divas, and then... Um, it's people like Sandra who were the ex ex with the ex exclusion of like the exception of like Mark Carano who's a freaking tool. But other than him, um, all the other you know extras on the show, the secondary characters are probably the best part about Total Divas, including Sandra. She's just hilarious. But despite that, the Funkadactyls ditch her because they want to get new gear, specifically Cameron, and then Funkadactyl, or rather uh, Naomi says or Trinity, whatever. That if you want to ditch her, the all the heat's going to be on you. It's not going to be on me. I'm going to say it's your idea. So then we see a brief clip of Brie versus Naomi, the match they had in an episode of Raw. Brie Bella wins via Twin Magic. The referee sees that they do Twin Magic, and then she reverses the referee reverses the decision, and it becomes uh, Naomi scoring the victory. So, which was always so stupid to me when they came back, because obviously they had very different aesthetic differences between Nick and uh, Brie and Nick. You don't need me to tell you what they are. When they came back to the company back in early 2013, so the fact they were still doing Twin Magic even by that point was just asinine. <laughs> but uh, at least the referee noticed that I completely forgot about the match. It was so forgettable. But um, at least the referee noticed that I, I forgot about that part and reversed the decision. I don't think they used Twin Magic after that. I would hope not just because it was so stupid they were still using it even at that point. I know they used it for a time here and there in 2015, but it was a bit different when they used it last year. It was a bit of a different... Uh, formula or flavor, I guess, because they didn't look exactly the same, so they tried to block their view, the referee's view. It's it's a long story. But anyway, Naomi beats Brie you know, by disqualification. And they show some clips from that match. So Eva talks to Jane and Mark about her quote-unquote background in dancing and seeing, seeing if she can get an opportunity to uh, get a spot with Fandango. And uh, they say not so, uh, they, they say, I guess, like, why didn't you tell us that from the get-go? And she's like, I don't know, I just saw Fandango and thought it'd be a good idea if I could be his dancer. Excuse me, I just hit the mic. But uh, they're like, okay, so we'll give you a shot. So they didn't even bother looking into it. Again, how unrealistic this show is, and even if that is the real process, it's almost like a lose-lose, because it's very unrealistic. And if this is actually what happened... They look like complete idiots for not looking into her background more. She just says that she has a dancing background and that's it. They don't ask for any proof, any evidence, any awards from her dancing background, nothing. They just assume that she's telling the truth. The same girl, mind you, who was told to dye her hair blonde, yet went to go dye it red anyway. So, uh, in the previous episode, no less than an episode earlier, so... Uh, it's just, or no more than an episode earlier, so I think it's just ridiculous they just take her word for that. But we'll get back to that when we get back to it. Uh, Brie and Brian traveling with John Cena and Nikki Bella. They check out their house, check out the private jet, their pool, all this other stuff. Uh, Nikki, Eva, I guess, have some Twitter drama, and it's kind of briefly touched upon. It doesn't really lead to anything. Like, like I said in the previous episode, when um, Brie and Nikki were kind of upstaging JoJo and Eva, 
when they're, you know, as newbies and telling them to go get their champagne and knocking on their door, you know, at two in the morning, whatever, that only really lasts for the first episode. Um, that, that kind of, uh, heat between the two or rather the four of them doesn't really last beyond that. They're kind of friend, They're kind of friends from that point forward. But while they're on the private jet, Nikki points out that Eva had asked John Cena on Twitter to be her tag team partner. So Nikki's not too happy about that. But speaking of Eva, while she's in her hotel room, we get introduced to her boyfriend, now turned fiance, Jonathan. So within we have no no um no mention of Jonathan prior to this point. I know it's only the second episode, but no real video package, no real pictures of them together. He just comes right into her hotel room and proposes to her on the spot. So we know nothing about Jonathan yet. The first time we see him, he proposes to Eva. And obviously she says yes and whatever else. So she's oh, not even whatever else. She just says yes. So they get engaged. She tells Jojo, and uh, when they go out later, when Eva goes out later to talk to Fandango about being the new dance partner, she takes off the ring. And Jojo was asking, like, uh, I don't know if that's right to do. Like, if you're engaged, you're not supposed to take off the ring, whatever. So they're a very uh, fishy situation. Like I said earlier, Cameron wants new gear. She goes out. She talks to someone about getting new sexier gear or whatever. Um, so Bree and Brian see the mansion, like I said earlier, they, they take a ride in her, in, uh, Nikki's Maserati or John Cena's Maserati. They go swimming and, uh, later they go back to Brian's house and they don't really like what they see, Nikki and John Cena. It's a very two clash of culture, so to speak, and that Bree and Brian kind of live in a more, uh, humble home, I guess is the proper way to put it. Brian lives with his parents and his parents, or is rather his parents had, not with his parents, but the parents, the house his parents used to live in, the house that he grew up in. So he still lives there, and Nikki and Cena kind of say that's a little weird. Even more, more so Nikki than Cena. Cena doesn't really care at all that much, but Nikki kind of points out that it's a little weird he's still living in that house with the same furniture. they got to look ahead to when they get the dog and the kids, when they have kids. Like, is that the house they want to be living in? Blah, blah, blah. So Cameron gets a new attire. Eva meets with Fandango, goes to the club, and it's not really a business meeting, so to speak, and they're kind of doing mixed signals, mixed signals because... You know, Eva's flirting with Fandango and vice versa, so it's not really a business meeting, and Eva doesn't really let on that she likes him, but she kind of gives strong indication that she'll do whatever it takes in order to be his dancer, so, and she's saying they have good chemistry and whatever else, but Fandango's really starting to hit it on and kind of uh, hit on Eva a little bit, even though the fact that she is engaged, but she's not showing because she doesn't have the ring on, so some drama kind of goes up there. Naomi gets her gear after Cameron makes the gear, or she gets the gear made by whoever her tailor is or whatever. Cameron's gear is fine. Naomi's gear, not so much. Because I don't know who made the gear or whatever, but basically they assumed that they had the same sizes and whatever else. Cameron didn't really think that part through too much considering the fact that she gave Naomi the gear and she put it on didn't fit. She had her cookie hanging out according to what Naomi said. <laughs> but uh, so her uh, gear does not fit. She has to get it made. And she, this is like right before they're, have, they're supposed to have a match on Raw. And they have to go to Sandra. They have to confess to her that they were wrong. Specifically, Cameron. She was the one that went behind Sandra's back. So it's her that has to apologize. We'll get back to that in a little bit, though. So we have a wood shopping contest between the Bell Twins and the guys. Bree and Brian. Skinny does pretty well. Nikki does, I think, chop two um, things of wood. And then Brian can't get any because he takes his time. And he takes way too long so the girls win. And that means... Uh, I think there was some bet that... um that they could do whatever they want to for a month, give them a back massage, something stupid like that. But anyway, the girls win the wood shopping contest. And then uh, Nikki points out that after going to Brian's house, that she tells Bree, that Nikki tells Bree that you need to live where you're going to be happy. This is not only going to be a temporary thing, this is going to be where you're going to live for the rest of your life. Do you really want to live in the house that Brian's parents grew up in, that parents, you know, that Brian's parents lived in, and that Brian grew up in, that Brian grew up in? So you need a house where you're going to be happy in. For the rest of your life, I gotta side with Brie and Nikki, or rather Brie and Brian here, just because I feel like um, the house that you know the, the house that they lived in wasn't really that bad. Brian, or rather Brie, lived in Arizona and they had a house over there, but um, I don't really think it was that big of a deal. Nikki's kind of making a bigger deal than it has to be because she's very materialistic and she wants to live in a bigger house, a lot like with the one that she lives in with John Cena, and she's saying that the house that Brian lives in is cute for like you know Christmas and Thanksgiving, but. For a full-time, 24-7 deal, not so much. But anyway, though, so that's that. Um, after that, the Fandango dance routine with Eva Marie goes absolutely atrociously. <laughs> so uh, Eva goes out there, like I said earlier, what her line was that she's going to fake it till she makes it. And that's not quite what happened. She's not going to be able to make it if she continues to fake it and does not do well because her dance dancing skills are absolutely awful. 
So they have the tryout. They have the uh, not rendition. They have the fucking uh, whatever the the one over of the, what the dance routine is going to look like. And not live on Raw. Thankfully, that would have been taking it a step too far to assume that they're going to take Eva's word that she has a dancing background and then put her on Raw immediately. Thankfully, that was not the case. They do a one through uh, <laughs> of the dance routine right before Raw. Eva does horribly. Mark and Jane are not happy with her whatsoever. That puts her in some deep shit. She has to go talk to Stephanie to close out the episode. And uh, just does not go well because Stephanie scolds Eva. Tell, tells her that she goes behind management's back again. Lies to management again. If anything along these lines happens again, she will be gone. And Eva is on the verge of breaking down, as she should be. So again, we go from episode one. And when Eva goes behind Jane's back and kind of obeys or disobeys her orders, rather. Not obeys, disobeys. Gets blonde hair or gets red hair color instead of blonde, and then in this episode, the very next episode, she proves she's even more of a troublemaker by lying to management about having a dancing background where it could have potentially cost her her job. So we're not really, you know, uh, introduced to Eva in the best of ways in the first two episodes of the show, and also right before the end of the episode, that Stephanie and Eva confrontation, that little meeting, is the thing that closes out the show. But we also have. Cameron and Naomi apologizing to, I think it was Sandra, about about getting the new gear because Cameron's gear does not fit too well, or rather Naomi's. So they have to apologize to her, and that kind of closes out the episode right before they close out with Eva and Stephanie and her yelling at her about not you know and not having the dancing background that she promised. So that's what closes out the episode, the, the cliffhanger heading into episode three, season one of Total Divas. So that's what we're going to leave off on going into episode three of the show. That'll be in the next review. But in the meantime and in between time, you guys can follow me on the Twitter machine at WrestleRant on Facebook at facebook.com backslash graham.jason.matthews and right here on YouTube by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. So all support is greatly appreciated. I'll catch you guys in the next review. I'm Graham Jason Matthews, and I'll catch you folks down the road.